The Perseverance rover has spent nearly two years on Mars methodically collecting precious rock samples and carefully storing them on board for return to Earth. So why is NASA now dropping them in the dirt? On this episode of Mars Guy. Since arriving in February of 2021, Perseverance has been on a mission to identify and select rock samples that will tell the geological and maybe biological history of Jezero Crater. But the real science to be done on these samples won't happen until their return to Earth, which will take a second mission with a rocket to carry them into Mars orbit, and a third mission to retrieve them and deliver the precious cargo home. An almost inconceivable amount of engineering went into designing a system that could not only collect the samples, but also package them up into airtight tubes free of contaminants from Earth. 15 core samples about the size of a AA battery have been drilled out of rocks along with two regolith samples plus two witness tubes and a sample of atmosphere. The strategy from the beginning has been to collect two samples at each site so that one could stay with the rover and the other could be dropped off in what's referred to as a sample depot. The details of the sample retrieval plan have evolved over the course of the mission, but now it looks likely that Perseverance will survive until at least 2029 when the sample retrieval lander arrives. That means Perseverance can be the primary way to get samples to the return rocket, also known as the Mars Ascent Vehicle. But the backup plan is to send two Ingenuity class helicopters on the lander that can fetch the samples if Perseverance can't make the delivery for whatever reason. And that's why some of the sample tubes will be dropped in a sample depot. Call it Mission Assurance. The location was chosen with both the sample retrieval lander and sample recovery helicopters in mind, so a smooth, flat, nearly rock-free surface is best. Here's a video of an engineering model of the helicopter testing out its new driving capability in a test bed at JPL. It can only pick up one sample at a time, so better to spread out the sample tubes in the depot. That way the helicopter's got plenty of room to land and approach a tube without disturbing others. And although highly unlikely, this also helps ensure that any mobile sand ripple doesn't cover up all the tubes. At most, there probably will be only a thin layer of dust accumulation in seven years. This past week, Perseverance began dropping off 10 of its tubes. It approached the depot, took a 90-degree left turn, pulled forward, and made the drop with Mars Guy for scale. Here's what the drop looks like in the test bed where this operation was tried repeatedly. And here's the view from the Watson camera on the end of the robotic arm taking a selfie after the drop on Mars. Note the way that the front wheels are turned. I suspect that's because some of the testing showed the possibility of a tube tumbling into one of the front wheels, so better to turn them. The selfie image is needed to show that the tube did indeed drop and that it's not under or in one of the wheels. The next Sol, or Martian Day, Perseverance backed up and fully documented the exact location of the tube before turning in place and driving to the next drop location several meters away. A second tube has already been dropped, just two saws after the first one, landing in a slightly different orientation. This seems to show that the operation can be done efficiently, maybe in less than the 30 saws that was originally planned. After that, Perseverance will be free to move on to explore the top of the delta where it will continue to add to its onboard cache of samples. Samples dropped in the depot may never have to be picked up, but their presence is peace of mind that at least some of these precious bits of Mars will be available for return to Earth.